Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome to part one of my small land guide for beginners. In this series, I'm gonna walk you step by step through the basics of survival. And if all goes well, I may continue this series through all of the progression that we currently have available in the early access. Before we jump into this, I wanna say that if you are into open world survival games like Grounded, this game is very much for you. It's sort of an enchanted forest version of Grounded with the crafting and building system that is very reminiscent of Valheim. There are also mobs you can tame like in Ark Survival and I've been having a blast just running around poking bees and building a house on top of a giant tree. I highly recommend it if you haven't played it yet and I hope that these videos can help you get started on surviving and progressing through the game. So let's fire up a new game and I'll talk about most of the basics as we go. When you start a new world you begin inside the small folk burrows. This is a little intro area where you can familiarize yourself with character movement and interactions. First thing to cover is the gathering mechanic. Hover your mouse over any resource and press F. Anytime you hold the F button down you will automatically pick up any items from the ground. This is useful for making sure that you don't miss any items dropped by enemies or harvested resources. Be sure to interact with these owl effigies for beginner tips. One of these will teach you about antenna mode which you can activate at any time by pressing V. This will put you in a black and white view that will identify nearby resources that you can harvest. This is incredibly useful when gathering because many resources blend seamlessly into the surroundings. So being able to identify what stuff is actually important is going to save you a lot of time in the wilds. As you gather wood, fiber, and resin, you will begin to unlock crafting recipes. Some of these you can craft any time, but most will require crafting stations. Hitting tab will access your character inventory, and from here you can click on the codex tab to view all recipes you have learned. It is a very convenient way of keeping track of what resources you need to gather, and it even shows you what station or NPC you need to craft. Once you leave the burrow, you should continue to gather up as much of the three basic materials as possible, especially fiber and wood. As you make your way down the path, you should run into Hearn, your first important NPC. Speaking to him will unlock the location of the Elder, and he will also offer to craft some starter armor for you. All armor in the game needs to be crafted at an NPC, and the materials needed can usually be found in the surrounding area. With Hearn, you have a choice between padded and light gear. The first set will give plenty of cold protection, but early game doesn't get super cold, so I would recommend going for the light gear, which will give a little protection plus movement speed. In order to use tools and items in your inventory, you will want to load them onto your item bar from the inventory screen. You start off with a club and some bandages, so equip them on your item bar the first chance you get. Once you get a bit of resources, there are a couple tools that you'll want to craft. Press G to open your character crafting menu and make yourself a wood hatchet, a builder's hammer, and a torch. Equipping the hatchet will allow you to chop down some of the edible mushrooms growing near the burrows, and that'll make for some good early food. Now it's time to go speak to the elder. Press M to open your map and locate the icon for the elder. Anytime you want to track a map marker, simply left click the icon on your map. This will put the icon in your overhead compass while you're exploring and it will help you stay on the right track. You could also use this to track your gravestones if and when you die. Head over to the Elder and speak to him. He will tell you about the Clover Key, which is more or less the main quest of the game. He will also add the locations of three settlers to your map. The first of these settlers you should seek out is Caleb, who is located just across the river. As you make your way down to the river, you will probably get attacked by ants, so equip your club and get ready to party. Fighting ants is pretty straightforward. They make a cute little growl right before attacking. You can hit them once while they're winding up, and then hit control to roll away before they hit you. You'll find that many of the fights in the game are very similar to this pattern. Pop once and then roll away. Now stamina is a precious thing in small land. All of this hitting and rolling consumes a lot of stamina and you really need to keep an eye on that bar to avoid getting stuck in front of an enemy unable to do anything. So when your stamina gets low, you should focus on backing off and dodging until your stamina recovers enough to start attacking again. Anytime you take damage, you should check your hunger. You will only recover health passively if your hunger is above 70, so try to keep it topped off as often as possible. You can eat raw foods that you find in the world, but in general you should be cooking meals for the added benefits. So equip your builder's hammer and right click to pull up the crafting menu. Under the interactive tab, select a 
campfire, which you can build from wood and resin. Now place the campfire down and interact with it by pressing F. This will pull up a few basic cooking options for you. Now, the reason cooking is so powerful is because, in addition to restoring hunger, cooked foods will temporarily pause your hunger loss. Most campfire foods will apply this effect for three minutes, but higher tier cooking can pause it for even longer. You can turn your ant heads into skewers and your mushrooms into steak. While we have our builder's hammer out, let's set up a bed. You're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with quickly creating a basic shelter for sleeping and riding out storms. Start with a foundation, then place a bed on top of it. In order to sleep in this bed, it needs to be sheltered. So place a wall on one side of the foundation and then put any roof on top of the wall so that it covers the bed. Practice setting this up quickly so that you can build it on the go whenever you need one. If you're ever curious about the status icons above your health bar, you can check them on your character's inventory screen. You can see that I currently have a full stomach, which is the hunger pause from eating cooked food. I'm well nourished, which provides the health regen while hunger is high, and I'm sheltered from being raised in suburbia, I mean standing under a roof. You can always check the time of day on your map screen, and it's useful for seeing how much daylight you have left. You can always sleep through the rest of the night in a sheltered bed, and this will instantly restore health at the cost of hunger. At nighttime, new mobs will spawn from their burrows, even if you just killed the daytime version. So avoid setting up camps too close to these spawners. And if you want to work or travel at night, you can always equip your torch. Okay, time to do some more crafting. From your interactive tab on the builder screen, select a workbench and place it down. Now access the workbench by pressing F. Here you can craft some basic tools and weapons, as well as repair all your gear. For now, all we really want to craft from the workbench is a wooden sword. While you're fighting, be sure to check enemy resistances and weaknesses by going into antenna mode. You can see that ants are vulnerable to edged weapons, so your sword is going to be much more effective than your club at dealing damage. At this river crossing, look for both a screw and a bottle cap. You will need one of each to build the stone cutter, which will be your next crafting station. For now, just hold on to these two items. If your inventory gets full, you can unload stuff by building a simple chest out of wood and fiber. And I like to create map markers for loot chests so that I don't forget where I'm leaving stuff. This will be less of an issue later when you move all of your stuff into a giant tree. Early game though, you can get by with just your character inventory, and common resources can be found all over the map. Now, repairing is an important aspect of the game. All of your tools and armor lose durability as they get used. The nice thing about this repair system is that slightly damaged gear can be repaired at no cost. You do this by going to a workbench and selecting the repair tab. In general, you should repair stuff as soon as that durability bar goes from green to yellow. If you let it go for longer, you may have to spend resources to repair it, and and later on, it'll be a pain traveling around with all those items. You can deconstruct anything you build by equipping the builder's hammer and hitting C on a structure. You get all the building resources back, so you should get in the habit of throwing down workbenches and repairing your gear as often as possible. Avoid water at all costs. Small folk can't swim, and you'll die quickly if you fall into a river or pond. You can make it across these small rivers by running with left shift and jumping, but why not make it easy for yourself and build a bridge? In general, don't be shy about building stuff all over the map. A quick bridge from a combination of foundations and stairs will make travel over water a lot less dangerous. Eventually, you will make your way over to Caleb. He'll talk about Scotty and give you the map location if you don't have it, and he'll also offer to craft some stone armor for you. If you ask about harvesting rocks, he will also give you a lead on how to make a pickaxe. You're gonna need to kill some bull ants for their mandibles, and there happens to be a ton of them in the mines to the north, so that's where we'll head next. If you are about to get in a fight, it's always a good idea to plop down a safety bed and set a respawn point by hitting F. If you die, you spawn back at your bed, and if you don't have a spawn point, you'll have to travel all the way back from the burrows. Beds are cheap to craft, and a bit of preparation can save you a lot of travel time if the unthinkable and, let's face it, the inevitable happens. Also, before we jump into more fighting, let's craft some simple bandages at a workbench. These let you heal up faster than the past of health regen and are not too expensive to make. Always a good idea to keep a stack of healing on your inventory bar. So now let's fight a bull ant! Always try to aggro one enemy at a time if possible. Things can quickly get out of hand if you're swarmed. Bull ants will attack by opening their mandibles and then chomping. They hit harder than regular ants, but the kiting pattern is the same. Swing at them, and then roll to dodge their attack. I got a bit overzealous here and had to deal with two at the same time, and my health was pretty low by the end of the fight, so I'm applying a bandage. Be careful if you're trying to heal during a fight, because it locks you into a healing animation for a few seconds, 
and you can't dodge or block during this time. If you have to heal, then try backing off first. Otherwise, they'll just keep wailing on you while you're trying to patch yourself up. Now, with a mandible and some wood, you can craft a, get this, mandibular pickaxe at your workbench. You can use this to mine out some of the rocks in the area, and if you manage to clear the mines, there's a bunch of rocks down there too. You need 42 rocks to make the full set of stone armor, and you're gonna want a bit extra to craft some other stuff. Friendly reminder to repair your tools constantly, especially if you are focused on using a tool to harvest resources. This pickaxe doesn't have a ton of durability, and if you mine for too long, you'll need more rocks just to repair. After you get enough rocks, head over to Caleb and have him craft up your stone armor. This is a big upgrade in protection and will serve you well on your way to your next destination. Open up your map and left click on Scotty to track and you can start to head down. Now with 10 stone and your bottle cap and screw, you can craft a stone cutter with your builder's hammer. This will unlock a couple of new weapons, but you will need refined wood before you can make them. In the hill behind Caleb, you'll find some rye plants, which you you can chop down for seeds. Once you get a few, place down your stone cutter, refine some seed oil, and then craft up some refined wood. Now you can craft a stone spear, which does pierce damage, and a stone hammer, which does blunt damage. You can also make a crude bow from your workbench, but I find the early melee weapons to be much more effective. Keep chopping rye plants as you make your way towards Scotty. You're gonna need a fair bit of refined wood for future crafting. The next enemy you will likely face is the Sawyer Beetle. These guys drop chitin, which you will need for the next armor set. They are vulnerable to pierce damage, so your stone spear is a good choice. When they charge you to attack, you can poke them once, and then roll away to dodge the bite. You could also cook up the beetle hearts at a campfire as another good food option. You will also run into a lot of bees, and their drops are pretty important to get. You can use your spear to fight them, same vulnerability as the beetles. The kiting pattern is also more or less the same, just be mindful because if they sting, you will be poisoned. The effect isn't too bad for health and wears off quickly, but you also restore stamina slower while poisoned. So you gotta keep a close eye on that, otherwise you could get surrounded and then your stamina will just stay bottomed out. Bees drop honey crumbles, which you can use at your workbench to craft healing patches. These restore twice the health of bandages, so make a few of these as soon as you can. They will be much better for healing than bandages in the next couple areas of the game. Before you finish playing, be sure to set a spawn bed wherever you are before logging out. That way when you come back to your world, you'll be right back where you left off and won't need to hoof it from your last spawn point. That's going to do it for this guide. In the next video, we will move our base into a giant tree, get grinding for chitin on the beach, and take on our first boss. Hope you found the guide useful, and stay tuned for the next guide coming out soon. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.